Carlos Nelson with Cascade Media Group. And tonight uh, we have uh, one of our urban professionals that we're, we're featuring, uh, Miss Yvette Riches. I met her, I think I, my first uh, meeting with you was about six or seven years ago uh, when I called over to the church and you, you were over there and uh, I've watched you over the years and had a little uh, interaction with you. And I felt that you really have an interesting story to tell about uh, your life. And so, as we say, uh, let's get the ball rolling. You know the drill. Okay, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I am sitting in Dayton, Ohio, I'm just finishing defending my dissertation for my doctorate of ministry. And so this has been a very interesting time for me in my life. I was raised as a military child. I'm an army brat, proud of it. And I think that has set the ground and foundation for me, born in Burlington, North Carolina, and if you know anything about military life, you move every three years. We moved from Burlington, North Carolina to Alaska. Well, in Burlington, my brother and I were born in Alaska. My youngest sister was born. And from Alaska, we moved to, Man um, to Massachusetts. And then we spent five years in um, Mannheim, Germany, back to North Carolina, and then my dad retired in 1982 in Savannah, Georgia at the Hunter Army Air Force base. What is so significant about being a military child is that you have an experience every time you move. People would say that, how do you not meet a stranger? I said, well, because as a military child, you are thrown into a classroom after your parents move and you meet new people. It is just part of the makeup, part of the dynamic of being a military child. And so after leaving and graduating from high school in Savannah, Georgia, I went to school, college in Greensboro, North Carolina, to North Carolina a and State University, Aggie Pride. I majored in mass communication. And while at a and I tried out for the track team. <clears throat> and what was interesting is that is that I was always... Uh, a person that was involved in activities. And so in the army, they had AYA, Army Youth Association. My dad was even one of the uh, coordinators of that when we were in Germany. That gave a way for children to be involved in basketball, football, softball, and cheerleading. Well, I was a cheerleader. Well, when we came back to the United States, I was a cheerleader, but I played the other sports. Well, it was time for high school. And I can remember going out for basketball. No, didn't make the high school team. Baseball, I mean, softball, didn't catch the ball. And they said, well, try out for track. And I was like, I'm not really running. So I learned about throwing the discus and shot put. Hey, turned out to be pretty good. I went to state, um, representing my high school my senior year. So when I get to a and I had not even thought about being an athlete, but I saw a uh, person walking across the campus and it had track suit and she was full figured like me. And I said, are you on the track team? She said, yes. She said, I throw the discus and shot put. I said, well, I did that in high school. She said, were you any good? I said, I went to state. Well, long story short, met with the coach through they gave me a walk-on scholarship. So that was very um, interesting because at a and in order to keep your scholarship, you also had to run cross country. So I don't wanna tell you any, all the backstory secrets that we had, how do we <laughs> completed those courses, but we did. But it gave you a sense of completion, an opportunity to show that if you work hard, if you're dedicated, you can make it through. So after graduating um, at a and came to Kansas City, um, been there since 1985. And while I was there, my aunt was a member of Centennial United Methodist Church. But she sent me to um, St. James 
with her neighbor, Camel Warwick. And I got a job at Macy's in management. And Regina Tony, a member, said, come with me to Revival. So after going to Revival and going with Calma, I joined um, St. James in 1986, which was significant because being in the military, in a military child, there were different religious um, entities that would come on the base. So this was the first time that I was really able to be committed and connected to a church. And so joining St. James, been a member since then, being involved, engaged, and really beginning to see God work in my life. And so from there, I was hired by State Farm. And um, July 13th, a lot of people think 13th is a bad number. We know that it's not true in Kansas City. But July 13th, 1987, and I resigned from there in um, May 15th, 2015, because God was calling me to do something different. And a lot of people were like, okay, you've been here 28 years and you are leaving a company that is in the Fortune 500, established. But I listened to God, which has taken me on a pathway that has been a true blessing. In the course of time working with um, State Farm, I was very involved with the United Methodist Women at St. James. And from there, the leaders like um, Liz Williams, who was a leader in United Methodist Women and at St. James, I was invited to United Methodist Women by Brenda Sylvan, Alice Ellison, community activist, in regards to this might be an area that you can educate, learn, invest in God's work for women. So I just delve right in. Levels of leadership at all level. And then one of my dear mentors, May Gray, who was the first African-American president for United Methodist Women, I got to watch her in action. I got to watch her put platforms together, trainings together, in encouraging opportunities and being an inspiration. Little did I know that in 2012, I too would be elected national president of this organization that she led and, and set some groundbreaking, groundbreaking historical work for the United Methodist Church globally. I'm not just talking in Kansas City, I'm talking about globally and bringing the Charter for Racial Justice, which is something that is needed today. So after being the national president, I had opportunities to serve on boards and agencies. And currently right now, I um, with the United Methodist Church, I'm on the World Methodist Council, which means if you are a Methodist, you are a part of this council. So working the dynamics of seeing how we can do God's work, helping um, alleviate the suffrage, uh, uh, people that are struggling, how do we help the people that are poor, the lost, the forgotten, those the people that feel that there's no hope. So I have truly been blessed by the opportunities that God has made for me. Now, I waited late in life to go back and get my master's. I got a master's in leadership from Walden and um, graduated there in 2013, started the uh, master's of Christian ministry at United Theological um, Seminary here in Dayton. And I was ready to graduate in 2019. And the college called me, the seminary called me, Dr. Bridget Witherspoon. Oh, by the way, we have enrolled you into the doctorate of ministry. And I was like, well, I'm a lay person. I'm not clergy. I don't have an appointment at a church. They were like, Yvette, your leadership that you have given to this church speaks volume. And I'm not saying that to be arrogant, but I'm saying that to say to the lay people, we have a responsibility and we have a calling from God. And so if God calls you for an assignment, he will also open the doors and make a way for you. So I have been truly blessed to have the opportunity to be a part of this um, doctoral program. I graduated in May and I can say that the work that has come out of this doctorate program is gonna be beneficial not only for women in Kansas City, but all over the world. My title and theme of my project was a framework of empowerment of women of color and the United Methodist Church. I wanna so interrupt you for a minute. 
I want to interrupt uh, for a minute before. Okay, go right ahead. Before my um, mind strays somewhere. I, I want to know, when did you, because, you know, off camera, we talked just for a second, and I was telling you about my calling. Uh, when did you recognize God had get, given you this calling? I can remember clearly in 92, sitting in the sanctuary, when I heard Reverend Emmanuel Cleaver II say, there's more to being a Christian than sitting in a pew. And I was like, now what does that mean? And so that has always resonated in my mind. There's more to being a Christian than sitting in a pew. And a lot of people get lost. I go to church on Sunday, I sit in the pews and that's it. But God has more for us to do than just sit in the pew. Church is not, church work is not in the church. It's outside the building. And so from there, God just continued to lead me, direct me, open pathways for me to see the greater opportunity and to see those that need the help. So, so essentially you're saying when Rev uh, had that conversation or that was his subject, that was the moment because that was the epiphany for me, a gentleman named John Fleming, Jim Watts had invited him to speak at Watkins Cultural Center. And I was homeless and stuff. And I came there, I didn't wanna come cause I didn't even have the car fare, but I came and Fleming said, God wakes you up every morning. What are you doing with your life? That's what he, he he had spoke and he was talking about young black men and yes. what he what what his what he would like to see for his daughter. And I was like, Carlos, you having a pity party because I had lost my company per se and things just was going bad. But that spoke volumes to me. And that's why I was interested. When did you find the calling? Because at that moment is when Cascade was born, basically. Excellent. Yes, God will reveal things to you. And I think it was a combination of things. Hearing that, and then when I was working, um, I had a supervisor that was not very nice. I would just say that. And I was like, how do I fight this? I'm a person that we used to take those tests back in the day and it turned out I was a pleaser. So I was like, well, maybe if I'm nicer, maybe if I'm kinder and that did not work. So God was saying, okay, am I gonna handle this situation or are you gonna handle the situation? If I'm gonna handle it, there's a few things you need to do. You need to just be in the word. And I took that literally. I would put scripture around my desk that I would remind me everywhere I turn, I always saw the word. And so I can remember giving his name on the altar at New Year's Eve. And then once I did that, I felt a wash over me of God saying, I have this. And from that point forward, I just went to work, did my job, and I didn't worry about it because I knew I was going deeper in the word and I was getting closer to Christ. So who has been some of your main mentors? I know you mentioned Alex, Alice Ellison and uh, Alex, uh, we go way back and, you know, I got a lot of respect for them and how and what they do. I don't know whether she might have been had any part played in your life. Well, yes, Alice has been a um, supporter of mine. Like I said, first of all, the most Influ most influential person in my life has been my mother. Uh, my mother What's lived to 96 years old, Swanee Moore Richards. Um, she passed away 11, 18, 18, but she was a woman that um, set the bar high. She was a lover of people, a lover of Christ and a believer in education. And so she always would tell us, keep God first. 
in everything that we did. So of course my mother, I had two amazing grandmothers that I got to sit under. When I was at A&T, my mother's mother in North in Burlington, I would go to visit her on the weekend. And I would just have the best time just talking and learning and engaging. Um, and so my grandmother was a person who had a sixth grade education, but she owned her business all of her life. She owned her first, the first cab company in her community. And so she was like, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. She was a woman of hope. And then my dad's father was from Sedalia, Missouri. My dad is from Sedalia, Missouri. Um, Julia Christina Diggs Richards. Oh my gosh, she was a woman of faith. And so she just truly believed. I mean, I watch her say, if God has it for you, it is so. I don't question it. And we're like, Grant, are you going to, if, if, if it's God's will? And she lived to 105 in 11 months. And I always said the 11 months because she said, count everything that God gives you. And so um, in, in terms of that, now in terms of women that I've had an opportunity to meet, engage with, um, like I said, Alice Ellison, when I came to the church, her sister Vanessa and I were the Brownie leaders at St. James together for many years. And then so when I started being involved with United Methodist Women, Alice Ellison was like, she just took me under her wing. When I needed letters of recommendation, I would go to Alice. And Alice is the type of person that will um, call you and tell you what's right, wrong, and indifferent. And she does it in such a nice, loving, kind Won't voice. Won't she do that? She, <laughs> she will tell you off and you don't even know you've been told off because she does it in such a loving, kind voice. That is Alice. So the Smith family um, just took me in when I moved here. Their father, Lee Smith, and my uncle, Uncle um, Uncle Robert, Robert Harris, were best of friends. I knew and both so they, of them. Her yeah, dad so they, was on Vine. Yes. So they actually... Um, the boys, the Smith boys called me Niece Rabbit because my uncle was called Fat Rabbit. And so um, just knowing that she would take time out if I need a letter of recommendation, when I started applying for different positions within the United Methodist um, Women's Organization, teen and college woman, Liz Williams, who's passed away. She was like, Yvette, I believe this is something that you need to apply for. You need a letter of recommendation. Alice Ellison um, was like, I'll write the letter. And so just encouraging you, just motivating you. Uh, another lady, Leola Evans. Um, she is our senior, our matriarch of our United Methodist Women's Organization, but she shows you how to carry yourself with dignity and pride. She is a trailblazer. She's a, a person who knows the word, but is, um, has a sense of humor that this has you, crack, um, this has you cracking up. And then Mae Gray. I mean, I can't say enough about having the opportunity to sit at the feet of a person who was a trailblazer in the history of the United Methodist Women's Organization. She did work with Jimmy Carter. She spoke in regards of the civil rights and the importance of education and the importance of making sure black women's voices were heard. And so I just love the opportunity to travel with her, be in the, the same setting with her and glean from her all her wisdom and guidance. There's other women that I um, could share, but those are some of the women that I just know have just made a, a significant um, impact in my life. You mm -hmm. know what? Uh, you're so real on this. Uh, the wording, I'm not the best with the language, but uh, you said to sit at their feet. Yes. That that I'm saying that 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 changed the tone to me, and uh, the, some of the things that you said that you learned from them, uh, how Alice could be so nice and would have uh, conducting yourself with dignity. I I wish I had a little more savoir faire about myself. I'd be acting like a savage, but 
Uh, I think no, God makes everybody in a unique way. That's the, one of the things I learned in the work that I did for my doctorate is that one of my mentors and United Methodist pastor, Dr. Rudy Rasmus, talks about God makes us so unique that he wants us to be the way we are because the way we are brings about a difference and a change in the atmosphere with different people. So you being you and having your story is so unique that it makes people stop and pause to realize that you are an overcomer. You are achiever. And so those are things that we have to learn to celebrate. And sometimes as black people, we feel if we celebrate our goodness and what God has done, we're being arrogant. We're being pompous. We're trying to show out. No, we're not. We are honoring God. Because if you can't celebrate the victories that he gives you here, you definitely can't celebrate them there. Tell me this. Uh, what do you have planned for 2022? Well, that's interesting. I graduated in May, but from now until then, I will continue to do the work that I have. I have so many things I'm doing. I serve on four boards in Kansas City, um, Flourish Furnishing, which is the only um, furniture bank in the Kansas City area. And so if you're coming out of homelessness, battered women, veterans, and you have a servants agency, um, Flores Furnishings works with the case manager to provide housing furniture for your apartment of your home. So I sit on that board and I uh, work with the community director trying to get volunteers and people to engage. I am um, on the board of Cornerstones of Care, which is an organization that really affects the black community because the majority of the young people that are in foster care in this program are African-American young children. So finding um, healthcare providers, education, keeping them safe, reunifying them with their families. Um, the other one is uh, newly rolled into Della Lamb and you know, they're dealing with the immigration. They're um, dealing I with a whole lot of things across the whole, board uh, in sports yeah. for young ladies. Oh, my, and, amazing, oh, yeah, yes, you, yes. I'm, so I'm, those I'm are, on top uh, of it. Yeah, uh, those are United Methodist Women's um, Agencies. And then the other one um, I serve on um, locally is um, Center of Conflict Resolution. Now, this one, I didn't even know they existed. They're right at 63rd and Paseo. But the work they're doing trying to solve the problems of not only families, but rifts between students in school, uh, agencies, teachers, and students. It's just a way to help alleviate the conflict. So working on conflict resolution and um, things of that nature. And outside of that, I serve on a board in St. Louis uh, at with children, um, family. I've been on that board for several years that deal with children aging out of foster care, children that are picked up um, from being se um, sex trafficking. And so just trying to continue to educate. And then one of the um, boards I serve on is um, the CM Merritt Foundation, which was established for my college roommate's daughter who was killed in a road rage out um, accident. And they wanted to establish an endowment so other students can continue their college um, in the um, chemistry department at a &T. So they're like, oh my gosh, you're on so many things I said, but it is not me. It is a thing um, that God has allowed me to have an opportunity to serve on the General Board of Global Ministries, the mission board for the entire United Methodist Church. So I can see how things are done. I can see where the money is going, how we're helping so then I can take that experience and help other boards and agencies to be able to lift up and achieve their goals. So with that being said, do you have any closing, uh, any closing words, words of wisdom for my audience? Well, first of all, I wanna thank you. Um, the closing words would be, now is the time. We have to understand that God has empowered us we are empowered to do our work, but understand this, 
You don't have to do it alone. I love partnership, collaboration, and networking. Those are the three things that I think as a person that works in the community, engages in the community, if you can align yourself with someone else that's doing the same work you're doing, uplift them, partner with them so we can help change the trajectory of what's going on in Kansas City. Uh, I think that's appropriate in closing. And as we all wait, no, first I got to steal Jim Watts's closing lines. Uh, make him mad, Yvette, <laughs> when he does his shows on our network. He always closes with, it was a plum pleasing pleasure to have you on the show, Yvette. So now that I've stolen his closing, we'll do mine. And Jim, you better not try to steal this. Uh, when you invest in your community, you're mm. really just investing in yourself. Absolutely. This program is sponsored by Star Group.
program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.